Welcome, I'm Michelle Anderson of Clarinet Mentors. Do you ever wonder why you always make the same mistakes when you're playing your clarinet music? Or do you have those places in your music that always feel extra challenging when you get to them? I wanna share with you one of my very most important skills in disrupting your playing and breaking through those familiar barriers that always seem to hold you back from playing as well as you want to. Now, I'm gonna admit that this video is aimed at more experienced players. So I would say intermediate to advanced players. If you're a total beginner, you're probably also running into some of these barriers, but I think um, you'll recognize it more if you've got some experience in your playing. So welcome to everyone who's here, but I'm especially aiming it at those of you that know there are places where you're always getting stuck in your playing. Playing a musical instrument is complicated. There are physical skills we need to train our body in. So I'm gonna assume you already have some working knowledge of how we should hold our mouth to have a good embouchure, how we should blow our air for good sound, how you should hold your hand and fingers. And in spite of that, there's still spots that are always, always giving you trouble. Well, I more and more, after more than 30 years of teaching and working with hundreds of students and looking at my own playing and analyzing where I run into trouble, I'm convinced that a lot of our challenges are how our brain works. A lot of the things that work well in music are because of how our brain works. It's a great tool. It helps us learn so much, and there's so many patterns that go into the autopilot part of our brain, so we're free to enjoy the music. But we also are very good at programming mistakes into our playing, and we usually don't recognize it. So I'm gonna give you some things to think about that I really want you to use when you look at your own playing and see if you have any of the habits that I'm about to talk about. And I'm gonna give you some tools to shake up those habits and hopefully break you past those, those ceilings you're hitting, those barriers that you just can't seem to move fast. I know this stuff works, so I'm gonna really encourage you to take a look at it. So here's the two things I want you to look at. Um, first of all, there's probably spots in your music where you always make the same mistake. Even if you're consciously, you know it's coming, it's like, oh, here's that spot where I always miss that F sharp. You maybe have penciled it in and yet you still play the same mistake. This happens time and time again to all of us. And to me, that's just evidence that part of our brain at one point played it with the wrong note, maybe F natural instead of F sharp, and it memorized that as the pattern. And that part of our brain is so powerful, even if we see it coming, we're still likely to make that mistake. That's kind of an obvious case of it. I have another video um, talking about it. I nickname it lizard brain, this primitive part of our brain, and I'll put a link to it here below. It gives you a bunch of specific exercises where you have one spot in the music where there's one mistake that you make. I'm gonna go a little bit more global in this video to why are these same kind of mistakes happening again and again. The other thing that tends to happen we have spots in our music where we know it's the hardest spot in the piece or one of the hardest spots. And a few things happen. I think on some level, it's as if our unconscious brain has an alert that goes off. Root, root, red alert, here comes that hard bit. Physically, changes happen in our body. We tense up like we're going to do it. We end up biting down on the reed, which causes squeaks or a pinched tone and the notes don't come out as easily as they want. And of course, when the notes aren't coming out, it feels like we're working, then we tense up even more. It becomes a vicious circle. We tend to start slapping our fingers when that red alert's going off. That slows our fingers down, but it also causes us to miss the holes a bit. And when there's a little bit of an air leak, the note feels resistant. And again, it feels harder to play, reinforcing the red alert. Like this is a hard section. These things happen to all of us and they happen because of these unconscious reactions that our brain has to what we're experiencing as a clarinetist. We need to change those unconscious reactions. We need to retrain them. We need to control them in order to take our mastery of a musical instrument to the next level. You need to do this. You can do this. You need to recognize when it's happening and you need to have some strategies to correct it. And I'm very excited about these. As a teacher, I always have different things I focus on from time to time. This has been my real focus over the past month or so, and I'm seeing incredible results with my students, which is why I'm sharing it with you here on YouTube. What we wanna find are, we can identify those spots that are giving us trouble, and we're gonna use those as our test spots. So 
You probably already have something in mind when I said that spot that always feels hard. So I'm gonna give you some tools to try and I'm curious to know how it goes for you. In fact, there's a comments box below this video. Um, I'd like you to share your pointers that are similar to some of the things I'm gonna share, but also to try this and let me know how it goes for you. So our goal here is to find ways to, I call it interact physically with the music, but disrupt our current brain patterns. So what do I mean by this? We actually do want to find ways to play the notes in the order that they're written in the music so that we're practicing the music, but not to simply play it in the way we've already been doing it that isn't working. So perhaps you've been playing it slowly and trying to go faster, but your fingers still don't come down accurately. It still always slows you down. There's unevenness, notes don't work. Whatever your problem is, you know what they are. It doesn't matter, any of those and all of those are valid. Um, it's not working. We need to find different ways to practice it. And our goal here is to disrupt that subconscious part of our brain. It wants to play the program where your fingers are slamming and you're missing the holes and it's uneven, all the things you don't want. Even though consciously you don't want it, subconscious part of your brain wants to do it because it's familiar. So I'm gonna give you what I call some pattern interrupts. There are ways to play the music, but you're changing how you interact with it. And this is gonna shake up the subconscious part of your brain and get you beyond that barrier. It's gonna retrain it, reframe it. This is really based on modern brain research and the way people learn. And there's all kinds of research that supports these techniques. You don't need to know about that, although you certainly can look it up. You just need to try it and see if it works for you. So here's some techniques. I'm gonna take the example of maybe a fast technical passage this seems to be commonly an area that will hold a lot of players back. So let's say I have something that's fast and flashy and hard for my fingers. Here's one way to play it, but disrupt our pattern. We're gonna take something that's fast and flashy and we're gonna turn it into the world's most beautiful, slow, calm piece. Let me demonstrate how I might do that. Just to, I just sort of reached into my clarinet shelf and I grabbed the 32 rose etudes which have some nice things and I opened it to the first fast one which is number two. Um, let me just play the first couple measures here and just so we have something to illustrate with I'm going to assume that this might be tricky. It is tricky. I'll just play so you hear what it sounds like. So my fingers are moving around quite a bit. There might be some tough tonguing. Let's use this as our sample. So it's meant to be fast and lively. Yet, let's say I'm having trouble playing that. Can I turn this into a beautiful slow piece? And why would I want to? Well, the reason I'd want to is that I've got a red alert going off in my brain. It's causing my fingers to slam, my, my mouth to tighten up. And I want to play it with good habits. If I move it really slowly, my conscious brain has time to override the red alert and say, I'm gonna really keep my fingers gentle and calm. I'm really gonna keep my air smooth, my corners rounded so that I'm not biting on the reed, and I'm gonna focus on beautiful tone. And really, you can do this very, very slowly. I'd probably just take a measure or two. And I would also be looking for the inner expression of it. So what's happening now is my body's playing the music, I'm playing the notes on the page, I'm playing them in the right order, but instead of it being frantic and frenetic, I'm going, ah, oh, it's beautiful, it's relaxing. And when I work on this with my students, I even encourage them to take it a step further, which is to, as they're playing it calmly and beautifully, and, and they have to do it four or five times. For this video, I'm only gonna demonstrate it once, but you need to do it four or five times. Each time they have a different focus. The first time it's really gentle fingers. The second time it's really smooth air. And one of those times after, as it's starting to work is simply to actually say to yourself, almost like you're, you're doing yoga and having an affirmation or a mantra, just to say, it's easy. It's easy. We're trying to deactivate that red alert. So I'm gonna play it in this style. what a beautiful piece of music and I'm trying to imagine I'm serene I'm calm it's very very simple it's it feels weird to do it and usually the first time someone will do it they'll accent it even though they're slow 
they're not fully serene. So when I'm listening to them, I'll encourage them, no, really, get your body very relaxed. If there's tension in your hands, if your fingers are slamming, loosen them up. So by doing it five or six times slowly, you really have a chance to start training your muscles to play these notes in a more calm way. That's going to serve you when you speed up. Sometimes just doing this a few times, then picking it up and trying it full speed, you'll notice you are already a notch or two calmer and things work better. So that's one disruption technique to try, but I'm gonna give you a few. Here's number two. This one's a really fun one. It's definitely a mental exercise and I encourage you to try it if you've never done it. Change where you feel the pulse. This is rhythmic pulse. This one is a very powerful brain disruptor. And I, I usually start it at a slower speed, but I'll actually have people do it playing faster as well. So what do I mean by that? Well, again, if we're looking at a fast technical piece of music, most of them are either written in um, a 16th note rhythm where we have four notes per beat, four notes per pulse as my top one here, or three notes per beat. Now, as it turns out, the piece I'm playing for you is in three eight time. So if I'm thinking of it in one, I have six notes per beat, da 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 Or if I'm thinking of it in three, they're kind of duples, da da ba da ba da ba however it is. So different parts of music, but most commonly we're gonna find groups of four or a group of three. If I have um, three groups of 16th notes giving me 12 notes, almost always when I play them, I'm gonna be feeling that pulse at the beginning of each group. If you've built in unevenness or if it feels hard to play, here's how we shake our brain up. We think of those same 12 notes, but now we're going to put the pulse every third note. And someone listening to you play would still hear 12 steady notes. They're not going to know if you're feeling the pulse every four notes or every three notes, but you know inside. First time you try it, it's very unsettling. It really feels weird. So now I'm thinking, yum bum 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 bum. It's a very different feeling, and it definitely disrupts your brain patterns because we do focus a lot on our internal rhythmic sense. So any one of these disruptors I'm showing you, I could do a whole video on. I'm kind of giving you the short, snappy version. I think that gives you enough information to try it, do it. It's very very powerful. It's a little bit tricky, but it's very fun. So I'm gonna throw that out as pattern disrupt number two. Number three is a fun one. I think I have done a whole YouTube video on it. If I can find the link, I'll put it for you below. This is to take a little short, hard passage of music and play it from the end and then expand. Well, I wrote expand backwards, but really, what I really mean is start with the very end of it and then expand towards the beginning of it. So we're going in a backwards direction. So what do I mean by that? Let me give you a little illustration here. Here's a cartoon representation of a really hard set of notes. And in this case, I have eight hard notes going up to our goal note, which is number nine. So whatever it is, yabba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, and let's say that's hard for me to play. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, so far, we've talked about some exercises where the first one, we're doing it slow and beautiful, which is great, it is powerful. For this exercise, we're gonna keep the speed, but we're still gonna find a way for our brain to feel at ease, that it feels easy. This is the key. We're looking for ways to always feel comfortable and relaxed. Turn off that red alert. I'm gonna start by just playing notes eight and nine. So what would that look like? Um, I'll just pick a short passage out of the music here. And um, there's a little arpeggio in the third measure. This piece I'm playing is etude number two from the 32 etudes. So, the third measure, if I play it full speed, landing on the fourth measure sounds like this. A little bit tricky. So for now, I'm gonna call the note I land on note nine. In this case, I only have seven notes, but we'll use nine as my example. I'm gonna play the note before it and the arrival note, just those two notes. Two notes is pretty easy to play fast. I'm gonna try and keep my, my arms really relaxed, but my air strong. Pretty easy to play two notes. And as I'm doing it, I'm gonna continue this mantra. It's easy. Da -da. When that feels good, I back up another note. So now instead of eight, nine, I'm gonna go seven, eight, nine. And again, fast. Da -da -da -da. Whatever the notes are. In this case, 
I have three notes. Now, these are kind of tricky. The notes I'm playing is open G to the B natural above it and then to the D. That's a little tricky. I have to have my hands in good position. So if I can't just do it quickly right away, I'd probably do it slowly and work my way up. But again, focusing on hand position and I would keep doing it until I can do those three quickly. Then I back up a note and do six, seven, eight, nine, and then I back up a note. So I'm doing it full speed, but in a very relaxed way and working my way backwards toward the front. It's another way of disrupting our brain pattern. It's different from how we usually practice a piece of music and it's very effective. So I encourage you to do that one. All right, number four, this is kind of a broad category. This is where you get to be creative. You need to create a way yourself to play it where you're just thinking a little bit differently. So I'll tell you some of the kind of things I would include here. Um, close your eyes, move your arms loosely, be creative. This is where you're going to somehow change your body position. Now you might say, well, close my eyes. How can I play the music? But here's how I would do this with a student. I'd have them play something very short, maybe even just four notes. Let's say the first four notes of this are tricky, um, which in this case, I might say, let's do the slow, beautiful etude for your first four notes. And I'll say, yeah, that's okay. Your air wasn't so smooth. Let's try it again with really, really smooth air. So maybe the second time they focus on their air. I go, yeah, I like that. Maybe have them play it two or three times. And then I'll say, now, it's just four notes. I want you to look at the music, playing it gently and smooth a couple times, and then I want you to close your eyes and do it. So at, at first you might panic, like I can't memorize something, but honestly, if you're looking at the music, close your eyes, play it. Open your eyes, look at it, close your eyes, and whatever you need to do, it's not so hard. Play it with your eyes closed. It just feels different. It, it interrupts our brain. We're not used to playing with our eyes closed usually. And then sometimes if it's a student I'm really comfortable with, I'll say, stand on a chair and do it. And they'll be like, what? Why would I stand on a chair? It disrupts the brain and they do it. They do it a couple times. It helps them play it better. Spin around, play it. Just be goofy, be creative, do something different. That's not your usual way you practice and just disrupting the brain helps retrain out of the bad habits into the goal we want. And just, I'm sure you'll have some great ideas. Put them in the comments box if there's things you've done that break up your old patterns and help you play it. All right, there are many, many pattern disruptors. I'm just gonna give you one more. So we've got five on this video. This is one of my favorites. I have done a video on this as well. Again, taking that hard technical passage, practice it in different rhythmic patterns. So if it's all 16th notes as the piece I'm playing right now, where everything just ticks along, ta 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 Kind of the usual way we practice it is we do it slowly and we'll gradually speed up. But let's say we've just got parts that aren't working. We've programmed physical things that aren't working well. Changing the rhythms is one of the best ways to do it. Almost every good teacher on any musical instrument teaches some variation on this. There's all kinds of rhythms you can use. A really simple one is instead of keeping them even, change it from to a long, short pattern, almost a jazz rhythm. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long. And the first time you do it, you do it slowly. I'm just kind of playing some jazz. <laughs> Now, what I suggest to people is it doesn't matter how fast you go, do it slowly enough that you can do it with no mistakes. That might mean da, ya, da, ya. Slow is fine for this exercise. We're shaking up the brain. What we're going to do is repeat it several times. Each time we make the long note longer and the short note shorter, but we keep the pulse slow. So if I'm the first time, di, ya, da, ya, the second time. Da ya da ya the third time. Da ya da ya da. So every other note's moving really fast, but then I'm relaxing. And because the tempo is slow, this helps me to say, it's easy, it's easy. Breaking up that brain pattern and feeling more comfortable with it 
having it feel easy. This is a fundamental huge concept that can transform how you practice. You're being much more intentional with how you practice, but the results you get. We need to convince our brain that it's not as hard as it thinks it is. When you feel yourself sort of panicking, you notice that you're tensing up. These are all the clues that you need to find a way to disrupt those brain patterns. And frankly, some of them are more, instead of subconscious, there's just our conscious stories. Ah, I can't play high notes. Ah, my rhythm sucks. Ah, I'm never good at this. All these stories we tell ourselves, and musicians have so many of them, we're so good at criticizing ourselves. All of those, we can also just consciously through strategies, train our body to physically do better, but also train our brain to think differently so that we can do this. And it's really important to our success. And I know you can do that. So as I said, all of these I could expand upon quite a bit, but I wanted to introduce you to the concept and give you some concrete tools to work with. Some of these are going to work better than others, and it might even depend on the music and some pieces of music. Maybe one and three will work best and others, maybe it's two and four, but I want you to experiment with these and try them out. And I would love to hear from you. I, I know lots of great teachers use elements of this. I haven't really seen it all put together in one package as like a brain interrupt strategy. And I want to keep developing this because I think it really makes a huge difference in my own playing. I've seen it make a difference with the students who come here into my studio and I want it to make a difference for you. I hope this helps you. I'd love to hear from you. And by the way, I just want to say, if you're not already a member of my clarinet mentors community, where you get access to newsletters that I send out with my favorite kinds of clarinet gear and clarinet music and tips and pointers, it's totally free to join. You just go to learnclarinetnow.com, put in your name and email address. About once a month, I used to do it every two weeks, but it's about once a month these days, I send out my favorite newsletters to you. Sometimes I'll have spontaneous live online masterclasses that you can join in and all sorts of other stuff. So please join my community. I'd love to have you there. If it's not a good fit, you can unjoin at any time. But our goal is to help you play clarinet more easily, to have fun with it. And I hope to get you into this larger worldwide clarinet community. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.